King Gonzalez, Vocals Magazine. How are you doing tonight? Good, man. Good. Another fine, fine day in the fine day in the world of Vocals Magazine. How are you? Very good. Where are you calling from right now? I am calling from Iraq. So, what time of the day is it right now in Iraq? It's 6 a.m. 6 a.m. 11 p.m. here. Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, eight hours ahead of Eastern Standard Time. That's un unbelievable. So uh, what brings you in Iraq? Uh, I was taking care of good people. Right on. Another day out here. So you're in the U.S. Army? I'm in the military. And how's that with Vocal Magazine? You do two uh, great jobs there. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough, but uh, they're both very, very rewarding on what they do and how they help people in the world. It's a good thing, man. Vocals Magazine does a lot of things for uh, the vocals community. It takes care of... Uh, a lot of special performers and professional speakers who uh, speak all the time and have to give big presentations to world leaders or big, you know, 40, 50,000 people in attendance of a, a show. And we just try, try to provide that medium uh, for their one quick resource of tips, how to take care of their voice, keep it going for the next show and time and time again. What's the origin of uh, Vocal Magazines? Where did you come up with the idea? Well, if you go to your favorite magazine fountain, for me, that was Barnes & Nobles and Starbucks. You, if you look in the magazine section, you'll find at least three guitar, a drum, a bass player magazine, but nothing really to take care of the front man, the, the one that has to really take precautions to take care of himself. If a guitarist blows a string, Swap out guitars, guitar techs backstage, unwinding, restringing, rewinding. A drummer blows a head on the drums. You know, halfway the next set, they can pull out the tom, interchange it, change out the tom head. But if the voice goes out, I mean, the voice goes out, you're going to be doing instrumentals pretty much all night. Right. So are you a singer uh, naturally yourself? Oh, of course, of course. And did uh, the cover bands for a while and did our own thing and... This is the uh, this is the additional. I've got to keep writing, keep fresh, and I'm very big on innovation and creating lots and lots of positive things out in the world. Uh, in addition to songwriting, uh, crafting the magazine myself, laying out the magazine, the layouts, the formats, uh, linking up with with vocal coaches around the world photographers, high-speed photographers that go to the shows and get these incredible, incredible shots of these high-end performers singing and, and doing their thing in their element. And I combine them together with a team of uh, three, or now four, with uh, ID Studio at San Antonio. Mm -hmm. We're now bringing together the big world community and uh, putting in the end, you know, high gloss magazine that the world can enjoy. Your music magazine is online and on written format, on paper? Yes, online and print. Now, where would somebody in Canada, let's say, go and pick up a copy like that? Uh, for now, we are actually in the middle of revamping the website. It's a social community now on vocalsmagazine.com. We are working on getting the high-end print going. This next issue, which is due out in April, is geared towards Fiesta Oyster Bake, which is happening in San Antonio on April 16th and 17th. It's a really, really, really big event. Fiesta San Antonio itself is a 10-day party uh, of celebration of uh, independence of the city, and only in San Antonio. It's You could say it's Mardi Gras San Antonio, but it's a good 10 days of high-fiving, long-time friend reunions, and the first two days kicks off at a university, and it has two big shows this year. The headliner for the rock, side, rock stage is going to be Loverboy on Friday night. And just announced two days ago is Puddle of Mud with Saliva as its backup, as its uh, predecessor. Wow. So you got two really big bands. And then, of course, we're interviewing Corey Morrow tonight, which is a big country star uh, down in Texas. And Restless Heart, some of the bigger names in the country. So we're not, we used to be only with rock primarily, 
because that's what we knew best was rock and pop. And when we put the big broadcast out for vocal coaches to come on board and start talking with us, the main responders were rock and pop vocal coaches. But we were continuing to branch out and reach into the hip-hop, the R&B, everybody, bring them all in and, and start pulling their big artists and ask them the stuff, hey, what are some of the things you do to take care of your voice? I know you travel, let's say, I don't know, a uh, hundred shows per year, and they travel all over the United States, Canada, and maybe some of Europe. You know, what are some of the tips that they have that they've had success with in keeping their voice healthy, with foods to avoid, uh, the passports, the traveling, the, the allergies, the time changes, the weather? What are some of the things that they were their personal secrets? Mm -hmm. And that's where we come in. A lot of these people do reveal the real secrets, mostly. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You'd be surprised. Some of the littlest things that help them talk about, uh, here's a good example, is Jeff Tate, our very, very, very first interview. Jeff Tate likes to have a pot of coffee going backstage, but he's not brewing coffee. He's brewing green tea. So mm. backstage, he'll be pouring the green tea with honey cooling off his pipes while Mike Wilton or Scott Rockefeller will be doing the drum solos or guitar solos on stage and giving them about four or five minutes of the spotlight. He'll go backstage, cool off the chords, do his thing and relax it for a minute and then comes back out and still, still to this day, this guy's got pipes and he can come out just belting it out. And incredible. That's just one of the tips that we've, we've, uh, found fascinating with, with these performers today. That's an interesting tip from Jeff Tate, Queensryche. That's, a, that's right. He's He's been rocking minimum at least 30 years. 30 years, you think about it, that's a lifetime to most people. He's been rocking that just successfully, and then let's take into account the years before that, before they hit it big. So we're talking maybe 35, maybe 40 years that... that uh, He's been doing this. Now, you interviewed a girl, Morgan Lander, from Kitty. She sings really hard, you know, and how is she taking care of her voice, let's say? Well, I don't want to give away the next no. issue of Vocals Magazine, but I will say something I thought was continually interesting with Morgan. That's a, that, I thought that was my female doppelganger. It was just like talking in the mirror because her and I are very, very cool. And uh, Side note, she had mentioned... I had just recently discovered Opeth the day before. I'd heard of them, but I hadn't really got into their music until the day before. And as I was interviewing Morgan, she said, yes, I even like Opeth out of nowhere. And I stopped for a second and said, wow, that's interesting. I just discovered him yesterday. I hadn't even mentioned it. And so we got a kick, and, you know, it was kind of like that same frequency, same, like, hey, man, we're on the other side of the world, but I still, you know, it was like tractor beams on the other side. And uh, some of the things she does, she just uses her voice as a on and off switch, going from the mel melody, the vocal melodies, to the growl. Mm -hmm. I like to put it in the, uh, I like to put it in the metaphor of, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to change that up. I like to put in the simile, because like it as, I like to put in the simile of single coil versus double coil with the voice. And the fact that the vocal melodic line is like using single coils that cuts through the mix. When she goes into the harder um, growl, it's like she kicks on the double coil homeworkers that pick it up and just really deliver a lot of punch with it. For, let's say, death metal and stuff, did you interview much people singing with that type of extreme voice? With the growls and stuff? Death metal? Uh, we are, yes. We, in past two days, interviewed Soulfly. I'm not sure if that's... We just did a photo shoot with Max Cavalera and interviewed him. Uh, they just kicked off their tour down in San Antonio at the Scout Bar. And... That, I hear, went really well. My team and Heidi Studio went over there and caught up with him, and I hear had a incredible time with the guys. I'm looking forward to getting the, the pictures and seeing uh, how it turned out. That's one just to get started 
Oh, we've interviewed lots of guys, lots of vocals, not just guys, gals, everybody. Gray from Mudvayne, he was on our right. cover. That was one of my personal, personal heroes. I, I really believe in what they're doing. His vocals are, are just fantastic. I, I'm a big fan of his. And uh, we also did Howard Jones from uh, Kill Switch and Gage, uh, along with uh, Adam. Duckowitz. Uh We are also working on some big, big names coming up, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. In in all the career of Vocal Magazine, um, how many interviews you possibly imagine you did up to now? Oh, at least 15, 20 of big name stars. And uh, how long has the magazine been going up to now? The history of it. This is year. This is year four coming on. Uh, the 6th of March, in two days, we will start year four. And you guys uh, utilize the internet as a b main tool right now to uh, get discovered with, you know, younger people, let's say, and uh, everybody in, in that sense. In a sense, yes. Not so much the word discover, but more of reaching uh, a broader audience. We we have used, back in, let's say, let's say in April of last year, my web guys... Red Flame Media and I were using cutting edge SEO techniques, which is search engine optimization techniques. Mm -hmm. And in that, uh, we're talking about techniques how to reach the top of the search engines within three or four hours. We implemented some things to, to really trip the search engines and to go in straight to Vocals Magazine of how to be one, if not on the first page, Let's just get right to it. Let's just go right to the top of the search engine every time. So if you type in Vocals Magazine, boom, you'll find at least the first page is all of us. And, you know, if you break it up, Vocals plus Magazine, you're going to find us in the first couple pages and and so forth. But those little tips right there, they used to say back in the day it was the A and B students that were radio, television, and film. Now... The A and B students are now the internet uh, strength students who are really using the internet for marketing, for discovering, as you say, but not so much discovering, but marketing to a bigger audience to get, to get discovered. Uh, we uh, a band that I really enjoy is called Circuit Underground out in L.A. Really cool guys, really good music. Same way they met up with us on the Disturbed uh, website. Mm-hmm. And uh, they saw Vocals Magazine. They really liked what we were doing. We really liked what they were doing. I think they just got signed to, uh, don't quote me on this, I think Atlantic Records. I can't remember, but uh, they were excited that we were. they were in our very first issue, and we were just happy to have them. These guys were incredible. Do you have any partnerships with uh, other types of magazines or other websites? Uh, partnerships. We We do have partnerships with... Uh, San Antonio Night Out. We are working with Heidi Studio. You can go see HeidiStudio.com, San Antonio Night Out. Search it on the internet, you'll find it. We are all bigger name magazines, not so much. We are a pioneer in our own field. And people are asking us to, uh, to, to, uh, to feature them. Before, we had to go and hunt down these big names, and now... It's starting to get to a point where the big names, such as Roadrunner Records, Victory Records, Neurotic Records, they come to us and say, can you blast this artist? We have Domin. We have Nickelback. We're, we're working on Nickelback. It's another great, great band. For sure. We did Trivium. That's another heavy. We interviewed Matt Heafy from Trivium, and that, I was steamrolled with the metal that came out of this guy. I was... I was just heavy. It was just such a great show. I, I like Trivium as a band already on their albums, but when I went to their show, I mean, it caught me off guard because these guys came out and just mowed them down with metal, and it was just so awesome. I mean, horns high, the marsh pit was going. It was a good, good show. When are you coming back to the United States of America? I will be back in the U.S. for the Oyster Bay, which is a second week of April. I'll be at the show covering the show and looking forward to seeing 
Steve Rosna, the executive director, Puddle of Mud, Lover Boy, Restless Heart, Saliva, Corey Morrow, all the headliners, all the big San Antonio VIPs. I mean, this, the, the Fiesta is a big show that people from around the world come in just to come to this event. So I'm looking forward to coming home and hanging out with uh, the wife and kids and, and Vocals Magazine. Because like you said, there is a guitar magazine, there is a drum and bass, but where's the vocals? Now it is. Right, you know, in the uh, microphone community, the microphone people have to advertise in the drum and, and guitar, which is fine because you have to mic cabinets, you have to mic drum kits, but True. it's a science behind micing a voice. Uh, what kind of mics, the omnidirectional, the cardioid mics, uh, you know, there are particular mics that really help certain people cut through better in the mix. Because you remember, when you when you have guitars and drums, the voice has to compete for those frequencies. And so, getting that right mix or capturing that right pull on the voice to go into the board really makes a difference. I've I've known people. I'll take Jeff Tate because he's such a. I mean, he knew he was on point with all the questions, and we had never even talked. And he, he was just that much of a scientist with, with the voice that I asked him, is there any particular mic you use, you like to use live? And he had said, well, I really just get with the front of the house guys and say, okay, what mic will make me sound awesome? And they go from there, and they go back and forth till they get a mic performing in front of a big, um, in a venue. They go back and forth until the mic, that particular mic captures him and then they, they go from there, and then they do their sound checks and, and then uh, come out and do an incredible show. Then you were saying that Jeff Tate changes mics every night. Um, that I don't know, but I will say he possibly possibly could. Uh, I don't think, from what I can recall, I don't think he had any particular mic he went with, but he does prefer the handheld versus the... Uh, headset mics he, he right. said that the technology is not there for those headset mics to really uh, capture a, you know performance a high level performance so he sticks with the handheld mics with a flat end as mm -hmm. opposed to the bulb mic it's the flat end one so he doesn't bump his you know most people even myself when you have the bulb for the mic you bump your teeth or mm -hmm. the flat end is much better and you can really you know when you sing you can either sing right into the mic like a cup or you can sing over the top Especially when you do your S's, you don't want to. You have to. You should pull away from the mic when you do your S's, so you don't hiss and really, really, you know, muddy out the mix. So I'm sure there's a lot of people in in your past when you interviewed, they talked about the P's and the S's. Yes, about the pop filters and how exactly, you know, because the engineer is as you're singing along, the engineer is back behind the mix and he's watching all the controls. And when you start doing, when you get too close to the mic and you start popping and doing the S's and T's, those red lines are spiking and really muddy out a lot of things and bleed over into the other mixes. And so he's sitting there trying to, it's much easier to just roll off just a bit off the mic when doing those particular consonants and vowels. Pleasure talking to you, Ken Gonzalez. Absolutely, man. Anything I can do, we'll be here for you. Awesome stuff. Take care, friend. You too. Have a good day.